Hi everyone, welcome back. Carrying on with some cell biology today, looking at microscopy or microscopes. So we're going to be looking at light microscopes versus electron microscopes, main differences between them, parts of the light microscope that you'd be, you know, needing to recall in an exam, and magnification maths. So looking at working out total magnification of the image you're looking at through a microscope, and looking at what I call the I am triangle. So as always, grab some paper, grab some pens, and follow along with me. Let's start by looking at the parts of the light microscope. The microscope you're probably most familiar with, the one that you've used at school. What I'm going to do to start with is, I, I don't expect you to draw the diagram, but I would suggest if you don't want to draw a diagram, make yourself a little list of what the parts are called, general idea of whereabouts on the microscope they are, and what they do. So I'm going to start by pulling all the labels on, and then I'll talk through them one at a time. start from the top and work our way down. So the eyepiece lens, clues in the name, the eye, is, this is where you would look down. So if we draw a nice big red eye up here, so this is where you'd be looking through. Now this is a lens itself and lenses like the ones I wear on my face every day are to, are to do with making images clearer and lar or larger. So this one usually has a lens that's times 10. Whatever you look through it is 10 times bigger than real life. That's gonna be important later. The next part on my list are the focuses. I'm gonna tackle these together. You've got a fine focus and a coarse focus. Both of them are there to focus or make the image look sharper and clearer. But the coarse focus sort of is bigger movements or bigger, uh, you know, bigger focusing movements or, and the fine focus is moving it very slightly. So both are used to focus, but this one is for sort of when you first start off looking at your specimen. So you say you put your thing on stage, which is down here, you would use the coarse focus first to make sure, you know, to get the image to just about clear. And then you just do some fine adjustments with the fine focus to make that image nice and sharp. Right, jumping over to the other side then, we've got the objective lenses. So just like the eyepiece lens, it is to do with making images larger, but these are the three ones that you would turn and click into place to make the image bigger and bigger and bigger. So they usually come in three strengths, and again, it'll depend on the microscope you're using, but the bog standard ones we have are times five, times 10, and times 25, though if you've got a posher microscope, you might even have a times 40, lucky you. So times five, times 10, times 25 is how much bigger they will make the images look compared to real life. However, there is a drawback. The higher magnification you go to, the lower your resolution is. Now resolution, you probably think of TVs like high HD and L, like SD for YouTube videos, for example. So resolution is to do with the smallest distance between two points where you see them as two separate points, which is kind of hard to describe. I'll, I'll put a GIF or a video up to help explain it. But it's the difference between sort of, if you look for a microscope, you can see two different parts of the cells, two clear dots. But if you had a higher power, they'd sort of be really blurry and you wouldn't be able to distinguish between the two so you know people out there in the glasses club think of it as you know high resolution is put your glasses on low resolution is taking your glasses off next part we're going to look at is the stage so think of the theater the stage is where the actors go and perform um, but the stage in our, you know, in our case, you could think about the slide as your actor and the stage is where you put it to look at it. So this is where your specimens are placed or rather where your slides are placed. Then finally at the bottom, you've got the light or, oh, I said microscope, I should say mirror. 
What's wrong with me today? That's better. So you've got the light or the mirror. What happens here is if you've got a you know newer or posher microscope, you'll have a built-in light. What that will do is it will shine a beam of light up. There's a little hole in the stage. Up through that hole, through the specimen, through the objective lens. There's a series of mirrors in here, which I'm not going to draw, uh, and it will reflect the light into your eye. And that's why you can see the image underneath or the image of the this, this specimen you're looking at. If you have a mirror, so you've got a slightly older microscope, or you know the cheaper ones have mirrors, you'd have to adjust the mirror and move it so a light source would be bouncing the light up and into the eye, but they both serve the same purpose. That's overview of microscope. In an exam, you wouldn't be expected to label it necessarily, but you would need to know, for example, if you had a question saying, you know, someone had an image that they couldn't quite, uh, the image was a bit blurry, what could they do? You'd say, well, they'd have to adjust using the fine focus or the coarse focus. Or if you had a question about um, which lenses can be changed to increase magnification, you go, oh yes, that's the objective lenses because they come in five or 10 or 25. So, either make sure you've got your little table done, Get the notes that you need to, pause if you need to, and then we will look at light and electron microscopes. So in exams you might be expected to compare the two types. We've talked a little bit about light microscopes already, so I'm going to focus on them second. Let's have a look at electron microscopes. I'm going to put an image somewhere about there of an electron microscope. I personally have never used one, I would love to, if anyone could sneak me into a hospital or into a, a, a university lab to have a, have a go on one, that would be wonderful. Um, but electron microscopes work similarly to light microscopes, but rather than using light waves, you know, visible light, they use beams of electrons instead. Now, because they're using beams of electrons, they can look at images in much, much, much higher magnification. Because with light microscopes, the reason you lose your resolution is you're limited by sort of the wavelength of light. And electrons, their wavelengths are, you know, tens of thousands of times smaller. So you have an absolutely mind boggling amount of magnification. And I'll put some images up to just show you comparing light, micros light microscopy with electron microscopy. And you can get some really stunning images using this as well. That's why I would love to have a go. You also get really, really clear images. Not only are they really zoomed in, they are very, very crisp and sharp. However, being so posh and fancy, they are really expensive. If you're going to use an electron microscope, you need to use it in a vacuum. So you need to suck out all the other stuff. So when you pass that beam of electrons, it's not going to get any interference. So that does mean you can't look at anything living. You can look at things that were alive. So you could take, for example, a fly. There's a picture of a fly for you um, and look at its head. But to do that, you have to completely you have to kill and completely dry out the specimen first. They have lower magnification and lower resolution. However, being you know a bit less posh, they are much cheaper and more accessible and easier to use. In exams, you might be asked to do some calculations that are to do with microscopes. So we're going to look at magnification first. So say you, you know, had a go at making some cheek cell slides and you've had a look at your own little cells. But then you're asked to work out how much bigger is what you're looking at through the microscope compared to real life. So what that's what we call the total magnification. To work out your total magnification, you just times the strength of the eyepiece lens, which is usually times 10, with the strength of whatever objective lens you're looking at. So 
So for example, if your objective lens was times 10, and you know that you get various objective lens types, uh, sorry, your eyepiece lens is 10, your objective lenses can come in five, 10, 25. So you do 10 times five, 10 times 10, 10 times 25. So if you're looking at your beautiful cheek slides under the full magnification, you're seeing them 250 times bigger than they are in your actual mouth. The other bit of calculation you need to do is working out, uh, if you're given an image, say this one, you have to work out how big is that cell in real life, but you're given some more information. So this is where what I call the I am triangle becomes handy. I call it the I am triangle because it says I am. Uh, each one represents a different bit of data. So I is image size, so how big the image is on your textbook or in your exam paper, the physical thing you're looking at. This is the one you would go ahead and measure with a ruler yourself. Usually you'd measure in centimetres or millimetres. M stands for magnification. Easiest way to work out which number in the question is a magnification number is it's always times something. So something times bigger than real life. They don't really have units. They just, I suppose the time symbol is the units. So you usually have times 10, times five, times 25. Last one is actual size. This one's a bit harder to get your head around. Actual size is how big the thing you're looking at. So be it a cell, be it a worm, be it a tardigrade water bear. It's how big it is in real life. And because we're dealing with very small things, usually you'd have no bigger than a millimeter. You might even have a micrometer, which we'll look at in a second, or a nanometer. The beauty of the I am triangle is that it gives you everything that you need to know. If you're doing foundation tier, you will probably only be asked to calculate image size or magnification and you'll be given some of the other data. If you are um, in higher tier, you might be asked to convert units or rearrange the equation. So let's write them down here so we can learn them. So this line here in our triangle serves a purpose. This line here stands for dividing. And this vertical line here stands for multiplication. So when you're using the triangle, you cover up whichever part you want and the rest of it tells you the calculation you need. So say for example, we were working out the image size. I would cover up that part of my triangle and that would tell me that image size equals actual size times magnification. Try it with another one. Now I want to work out the actual size. I'm gonna to have to do the image size divided by magnification. And if I wanted to work out the magnification, it would be image size divided by actual size. It'd be easy to understand through an example. So say you've been given a, a picture, let's do a really badly drawn cell. Okay, you've been given an image in a, in a book uh, and you've said, you've got to work out the actual size of this. You look in the data and they say that, they, that it was viewed under times, I don't know, 200 magnification, uh, but you don't know how big the cell is really. What you would have to do is work out from this, what does the question want? Well, I know the question wants me to work out the actual size. So I'm gonna need image size divided by magnification. Now, I, what one do I know? Hmm, if I look at the question, they've told me 200 and there's a times, and that makes me think, oh yeah, magnification always has a time sign before it. So I know that this number is going to be 200. The only thing that's left is working out what the image size is. Now, this is where you need to physically get your ruler out. Uh, you can use a regular ruler, or if you're feeling funky, you can use a uh, ruler in the shape of a giraffe, which is the only one I can find in my house. So I would then put this on here, depending on if they want you to work out the size of the width or the length, they'll usually have some little markers put on if they want you to be specific. But I'd always go for the widest part. So I would measure this, 
and go, oh, that's about 37 millimetres. I try and stick to millimetres, it makes it easy to convert them. 37 millimetres, so it would be 37 millimetres followed by 200. Now those numbers are a bit gross, so what I would want to do is make this number bigger and make it easier to divide. So I could convert this into micrometers, which we'll talk about in a sec. So we'll do that with times by a thousand, and again, I'll talk about it in a second. So 37 times a thousand is 37,000 divided by 200. That's a nicer number to work with. Then I will stab that into my calculator. Then that would give us times, oh sorry, 185 but what units do we use now because I turned the millimeters into something bigger it's going to be the bigger units so 185 micrometers now you might be thinking Miss Reese you're getting ahead of yourself what's this flipping weird you all about well let me tell you in biology we're looking at living things we're looking at cells we're looking at very small organisms so we need to use units and represent them so you pretty you know, pretty familiar with things like meters, centimeters, and millimeters. And you know that if you want to go from a meter to a centimeter, you got to times by a hundred, because a hundred centimeters are in a millimeter. And if you want to turn a centimeter into a millimeter, that's times 10, because there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter. But what if we're looking at stuff that's even smaller, like cells? Well, you use something called a micrometer, which has this really weird um uh, letter. Basically because mm was already taken, they had to think of something else. So this is called a micrometer or a micrometer. And there are 1000 micrometers in every millimeter. So if you, you know, pick your ruler back up, if you look at one millimeter and imagine dividing that by a thousand, and one of those thousands is one micrometer, so we're talking seriously tiny. Even smaller than that though, if we're looking at things that are, you know, inside cells, looking at ribosomes for example, you'd need to use nanometers. And like converting between millimeters and micrometers, there is 1000 nanometers in every micrometer. And then going the other way, you would just do timesing. So if you wanted to convert nanometers into micrometers, you'd divide by a thousand. If you had a number and you wanted to convert into millimeters from micrometers, you'd divide by a thousand, etc., etc. If you're doing higher tier, especially if you're doing triple science as well you would be expected to convert your unit. So you, for example, if you had a question like the one we looked at earlier, you might be given um, the image size in centimeters. Uh, so you then have to convert it to micrometers first, or you might be given it in millimeters and convert it into micrometers. But whatever you do, make sure you make, make sure in your calculations, they all have the same units and that whatever you've converted to, those are the units you need to use in your answer because you will lose marks if you put the wrong units. Okay, I don't know about you, but that's melted my brain. So we're gonna leave it there for today. Uh, join us soon, we're gonna be starting to look at uh, cell transport actually, looking at diffusion, osmosis and actual transport. So make sure you check that out and I will see you all very soon.